Welcome to Power System Protection Lectures. My name is Pratap Mysore. Today's topic is Transmission Line Protection. This is the fourth lecture on this particular topic. We did cover in the last lecture about how we set the distance elements. And as I mentioned, there are three elements inside the relay to detect three types of ground faults. And there are three elements which detect three types of face-to-face -face faults. And these two also detect face-to-face to, -face to ground and three-phase faults in the system. The difference between these elements are what are the voltage and uh, current inputs to each of these. A phase to ground uh, element to detect A to ground faults to measure the positive sequence impedance up to the fault point, it uses the faulted voltage if A phase voltage and the faulted current IA plus a percentage a K0 times the neutral current, the ground current. Uh, similarly, for a phase to phase fault element, it uses the voltage across the faulted phases VAB and the difference in currents IA minus IB and takes the ratio of the two to measure the positive impedance up to the fault point. The, the various combinations, uh, then this difference arises because our intent is to measure the positive sequence impedance up to the fault point so that when a fault occurs at a point, irrespective of the type of the fault, the relay is able to say this fault is at that particular location and take corrective actions accordingly. Uh, when we also said that um, we cannot uh, um, uh, you know, measure 100% of the line section uh, up to the remote end, the impedance uh, measured up to the 100% of the line section uh, to make a decision instantaneously. We said due to CT and PT errors and relay design errors and also the line parameter errors, um, we can be sure if the measured impedance is about 85%, 80 to 85% of the actual line impedance between line section A and B, and we make uh, we allow the related trip instantaneously. If it is in the last 15% of the line section, then we are not sure whether it is in line section A, B uh, towards end B, or it is uh, line say in line section B to C, uh, very close to B. So we, in order to you know, make this differentiation, we, uh, we provide a time delay. So we have, zone one elements, uh, zone one distance relay, phase distance relay, and ground distance relay. Each one of those has got three elements in within them. And there are six elements which are detecting faults on that particular line. And then there's zone one, which is uh, allowed to operate if the fault is within the 85% of the line section. And zone two is time delayed uh, to allow uh, discrimination for faults in the adjacent line section, and then um, and, and then that is delayed uh, by 15 to 25 cycles uh, based on uh, utilities uh, coordination uh, uh, the margins they allow. And then, uh, then we set zone two to take care of that. Similarly, you can use zone three also to provide complete uh, uh, redundancy for all the lines going out of section B. There are some elements uh, because of uh, the designs in electromechanical, they came up with another principle called KD uh, principle. Uh, this is how uh, used by Westinghouse electromechanical relays. Uh, they have uh, uh, compensated, uh, compensated uh, measurements uh, and uh, this is called KDR principle where it can detect all types of phase-to-phase -phase faults. And there is a conventional three-phase element which could be a phase-to-phase -phase element or a phase-to-ground, a phase-to-phase -phase element is used to detect three-phase faults also. Uh, and then the ground overcurrent can be used. Uh, this was the KD and IRD, uh, that is a phase distance and ground overcurrent combinations that was very much prevalent in the United States. And distance relays are time uh, co coordinated based on the reach, whereas the ground overcurrent relays, as we mentioned in ground overcurrent relays, they are also coordinated with time. Suppose if there is a fault within line section BC, then we trip uh, the relay at B first. And then if, if it doesn't tip, then we look at the station uh, A relay 
and allow it to trip after some coordination time, which we covered in, uh, in, two, uh, uh, in the previous lectures. Now let's look at the transmission line. So if there is a fault from 15% of the line section to 85% uh, of the line section, assuming that the ground one distance relay we are setting up to 85% of the line. Uh, so there is one relay looking from A towards B, which operates instantaneously if the fault is within 85% of the line section. Similarly, there is a relay sitting at B looking towards A and operates uh, in uh, without any time delay if the fault is within 85% of the line section. So if you put a block here from 15% to 85%, both the relays will see the fault and clear the fault instantaneously. Okay, now let's look at the line end faults or very close in faults here. If there is a fault uh, within from zero to 15% from line A, the line end A opens, but the B is not sure whether the fault is in this line section or behind uh, line A here, be behind the station A. So it waits for zone two time. So there is a delayed clearing for a close in fault from the remote end. Similarly, if there is a fault beyond 85% of the line section, uh, 85 to 100%, then the B line B um, uh, uh, end opens, the breaker opens, whereas A waits for a time delay because it is not sure whether the fault is in um, the, this particular uh, on the line AB or it is beyond station B. So there is a delayed clearing for end zone faults, as we call it, zero to 15% here, the remote end is slow. Uh, then, then if the fault is from 85 to 100%, the local end is uh, slow for that fault. So total clearing time is equal to zone two time delay plus breaker operating time. So if there is a fault on the line uh, within 80, 15 to 85%, both the breakers open simultaneously. If there is a fault outside from zero to 15 or 85 to 100%, one end is slow. So the total clearing of the fault is slower. Uh, it is equal to uh, zone two time delay because a remote end or a local end uh, operates slowly. Now, if we look at the other schemes we talked about, phase comparison schemes, where it looks at the current coming in and going, uh, current uh, leaving the terminal at the remote end, uh, the phase relationship between those two, then the exchange information on uh, communication uh, medium, and they uh, can cover 100% of the line section because uh, there is no uh, local 15% uh, uh, or remote 15% because it is a differential sort of a scheme. Uh, it can operate instantaneously without any time delay for any fault uh, on the line section. Similarly, current differential schemes also provide instantaneous clearing for any faults on the line. And uh, the, the third one we use, uh, suppose if we use distance elements, we make use of the information that is available at the remote end to see whether I want to trip faster or I want to delay. These are called directional comparison schemes. These are used with uh, distance elements or overcurrent elements. Uh, yeah, uh, in uh, the, the, these are non-unit protection schemes when they are used. Uh, these can be used to speed up the tripping for faults in zero to 15% or 85 to 100%. Uh, communication medium again, power line carrier, least telephone line, or microwave or fiber. We can use this just like uh, the differential schemes, uh, but we are making use of this to just speed up the operation for end zone faults. So the zero to 15 percent here for a remote uh, end uh, um, relay to operate faster, or 85 to 100 for the local relay to operate faster, based on the information exchange between the two ends. So directional comparison relays use directional relays to determine fault position relative to the protected line and communicates this information to the remote end. Uh, so information is used to achieve faster tripping at both ends. Let us look at how they are done. So now before that, um, I introduced the concept of underreaching relay. What it means, you are not setting the relay up to 100% of the line section. You are setting it only up to 85% of the line section. That is called underreaching. What is uh, that uh, relay in our case? It is zone one. Overreaching element is the one which is set greater than the line impedance. And this is going, uh, it can detect faults beyond the line section. These are, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
these are uh, uh, the, you know they are called overreach and relays which is in our case which in our case was zone 2 we can use that okay and then microprocessors have various combinations same nomenclature there are different uh, schemes which are based on electromechanical relays and then uh, uh, that has been uh, now used by microprocessor based relays so all these legacy scheme, schemes or uh, names are based on legacy systems but you can do anything with a microprocessor relays and combine any combination any types of uh, uh, schemes so now let us look at direct under reaching transfer trip scheme so what is under reaching that means your zone 1 relay is used to send information from point a to point b so now suppose if there is a fault on the particular line section here uh, from 0 to 85 percent i know that the fault is on line a so as soon as I know this information, what do I do? I trip the local breaker, but then I send a, a signal to the remote end to directly trip the breaker. That means whenever I, fee, I trip this particular breaker with zone when the relay at uh, end A says that it is on the line, the fault, I just send an information to open the breaker at the remote end. And same way, uh, you know, so essentially, you are covering from 0 to 85 percent you are tripping the remote end also at the same time what is the delay here it is just a communication delay of sending this trip signal from station a to station b similarly if there is a fault on the line if uh, a line at uh, if the relay at b pricks up then it uh, trips the local end and then it sends a remote signal uh, signal to the remote end to operate and why is it called underreaching transfer trip? The underreaching element, as soon as it operates, it uh, sends a uh, keys a signal to the remote end breaker to trip directly. It is not going through any other uh, scheme. Because you are directly tripping the remote end, you don't know whether it is a false signal or not. So most of the times, you try to use a more secure channel. So sometimes two channels are used to divide, uh, to provide security. Now, in order to, uh, to make uh, the system more uh, reliable, what they did was uh, they used permissive underreaching transfer trip scheme. It is same as a direct underreach as far as the local operation is concerned. The zone one relay anyway trips that uh, breaker, right? As soon as it detects there is a fault from zero to 85%. But when it sends the uh, signal to the remote end, Remote end, I should have used a zone 2 relay also. If I have, if the zone 2 relay has picked up, then I know there is a fault on the line. I, I confirm that there is a fault on the line and I get a signal from the remote end telling that, yes, I tripped uh, because the fault was from 0 to 85 percent and then I, I bypass without any time delay. Suppose if I don't get a signal, what happens if zone 2 has picked up from B towards A, then it goes after the time delay. Essentially, you are bypassing the timer zone to time delay as soon as I get a signal from the remote end. And then if the local zone two has picked up and if I receive a remote end signal, I trip it without any time delay. This is called per permissive underreach transfer trip. Again, in the direct underreach or permissive underreach transfer trip um, schemes, what is it that is keying the transmitter? It is the underreaching element that is keying the transmitter that is why it gets the name under each transfer trip and in the direct you don't uh, check anywhere as soon as the signal receives your trip in the case of permissive i make sure that i am also seeing the fault that zone 2 element is picking up and then um, and if i receive a signal i uh, check that and then trip it this is more secure than the direct under each transfer trip okay so now let us look at the permissive underreach. If there is a fault on the line, zone two picks up. Here, zone one trips the breaker and keys the transmitter. So it sends a signal to the local end. Here, zone two has picked up, but it does not trip because it, it has got a time delay. As soon as it receives a signal from the remote end, it trips. So what is the delay in tripping? It is just the communication time from uh, station B to station A. And now, if there is a fault outside this region, what happens here? There is no relay operation at the remote at station B. 
because the fault is behind. There is no relay looking behind. Here zone two picks up, but it does not receive any signal from the remote end. So it trips after time delay. If the because, uh, uh, you know, uh, delay, if the line relay is not operated on this line section. Why is this? Because if um, this is a backup for that section. Same thing can happen here also. Suppose if there is a failure of the signal here, then it operates in zone two time delay. So for a fault here, uh, within the line section, the local end trips faster, the remote end trips after a time delay if it doesn't receive a signal in the first instance. Now, <clears throat> the other scheme which was used was instead of using just zone one, they used another uh, zone two, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, which is overreaching uh, zone. And I, what we do is, instead of keying uh, with a zone one, we just key with zone two. And you can use another element here, which is zone one to trip, uh, not depending on uh, your, uh, uh, you know, pilot uh, communication, uh, not depending on the information from the remote end. If we, zone one is used, it trips right away. If there is a fault in 85 to 100% of this, then it uh, zone two picks up for that and it keys the transmitter. And if it receives a signal from the remote end, then it uh, trips without a time delay. So here, what we are uh, doing is, instead of keying with a zone one, we are keying with overreaching uh, element, which is zone two. That is the only difference between this and the permissive underreach. The modern relays use echo logic to achieve high speed tripping. For example, uh, if you take this section, if it is a weak system or if it is a radial system at the remote end, uh, what happens? If there is a fault on the line, there is no current in the relay because there is no source behind that uh, station B. So it, the relays won't operate. What we do here is we try to make you use a reverse element, looking elements. If there is uh, no operation of the reverse element. There is no forward relay or operation. What we do is when you get a signal, if nothing has operated at the local end, then you key the logic uh, signal back off, uh, to the remote end to operate faster. Uh, you spend some time on this and see, essentially what happens here is if there is a fault on the line, for example here, this sends a signal to the remote end, but nothing operated here because there is no source. And then as soon as it receives a signal here, then uh, no relay operation has occurred here. So if uh, the, the reverse element has not picked up, that means the fault is not beyond this line section. Uh, it uh, operates, uh, it's, uh, it echoes the logic back. It keys the transmitter again and it comes back. So it, zone two here picks up, keys the transmitter, if the uh, remote end uh, uh, receiver receives the signal, there is no relay operation here. It uh, uh, echoes that signal by keying the transmitter after a very small delay, two cycles or so, and it keys for about four to five cycles back. As soon as you receive a signal here, what happens? The zone to timer is bypassed and then the relay operates faster. The advantage of this is that if there is some other, if it's a radial system and if it's an interconnected system, if some other breaker is open, if there is no current coming in on the, on the other side, uh, then uh, you don't uh, operate in zone two for end zone faults. It uh, operates in just echo logic time, which might be about six to seven cycles, which is much faster than zone two operating time. So please go through these logic to understand permissive uh, underreach or direct underreach zone one keys the transmitter, that uh, permissive overreach, zone two keys the transmitter because the overreaching element keys the transmitter. Reverse okay, uh, looking elements could be zone three or zone four, it depends on the manufacturer what they are using. Uh, POTT logic is designed based on zone three or zone four distance uh, uh, relay elements. Uh, these are various uh, manufacturers who use what uh, uh, element is used as a reverse looking zone. So it is set to reach farther than the uh, zone one uh, of the remote end, zone two of the remote end. Now, if there is no current uh, on the in the system itself, then what we do here is 
we use what is called weak infeed trip. If there is no current flowing on the line, the voltage dips. So what if uh, the no distance elements have operated, if the voltage dips, if we get a signal, a trip signal from the remote end, we can open uh, the breaker here. In the same example as Ecologic, because there is no uh, current uh, infeed here uh, for a relay operation, or there is no current for the relay to operate, we key it back, but we can take a corrective action by opening that breaker also based only on the voltage. That is weak in feed trip. GE uses different schemes. Uh, they are called ecologic or reverse looking elements, and uh, ACL calls this a spot scheme. So some other people use uh, different elements. This is called directional comparison and blocking schemes. Uh, this uses uh, frequency shift carrier communication. Uh, you know, this is another uh, type. Uh, this is nothing but a permissive scheme. But if there is a fault very close to the PT, where uh, to the uh, point of injection of the signal, if you lose that, it momentarily allows the receiving, uh, you know, the receiver to pick up, simulating a, 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 a carrier receive signal. Uh, you know, you can understand by looking at it here. You have a receiver here, and then uh, you get a transmitter here, and then receiver as soon as it, it comes in here. But if you lose, the receiver produces a pulse on loss of a signal um, between the station A, uh, and then that produces a pseudo signal here. So if the fault occurs during a loss of a signal, it trips faster. So it is nothing but a permissive scheme, but a different uh, name for this. Now, so far what we were doing is we were exchanging information on a line where there was a fault inside the line section. So there were a lot of, uh, when they were using power line carrier, there was a lot of argument as to say that why you should send a signal when there is a fault on the line. How do you know that the signal goes from point A to point B? So what they did was they uh, tried to use what is called directional comparison blocking schemes. So what they said was, I see a fault. If I don't get a signal to block, then I trip faster. If I get a signal not to trip, telling that it is an external zone fault, then I delay the operation. That is what uh, this scheme was. So I, you, okay, you see that there is a reverse looking element that is keying the transmitter. And then uh, when the fault occurs beyond the line section, behind uh, station A or beyond station B, then that particular element, the reverse looking elements at these stations key the transmitter and send a signal to the remote and not to trip. So if the fault occurs on line section A and B, both the zone twos will trip, uh, will uh, detect the fault, will operate, but and then it waits for a certain amount of time to see whether they get a blocking signal from the remote end. So if there is an internal fault, both zone twos operate, reverse elements do not pick up, so they exchange information. There is no exchange of information between station A to station B here. So if it doesn't receive any signal for a certain amount of time, then it trips the breakers easily. So on loss of signal, it trips faster, and then it, gives, uh, it, it trips uh, even if uh, there is a failure to, for communication. Uh, so if there is an external fault, for example, there is a fault behind, then ZR uh, keys the transmitter and sends the signal to the remote end telling not to trip and zone two goes in zone two time. So this uh, pretty much uh, covers uh, pilot schemes. I hope um, you are able to understand some portion of it because this was just a le recorded lecture we just went through different schemes very fast. Uh, you please go through this and try to understand um, you know, how uh, these schemes operate. And if you go through the, the slides again, you will, you will be able to figure out how these schemes are designed. Uh, thank you.